Okay, good morning. I'm Tong Xinyi from Peking University. This work was done during my visit to Indiana University. And the topic of my presentation is Understanding Cross-App Remote Infections on Mobile Web Use. In this talk, I will first present the introduction as background. Then, I will show you some basic techniques of Zavi attack and two new attacks, the remote deep phishing attack and the remote privilege escalation attack. After that, I will demonstrate our automatic Zavi analysis tool and the OS level mitigation. And finally, the conclusion. Clicking on a URL in your Chrome, you may see your YouTube app popping up to play the video. Such URL scheme-based web-to-app communication is widely used in Android applications. Usually, the target of the URL scheme is normal activities. But what if the URL scheme is used to invoke another app's web view? Let me first show you a demo. The system is Android 7, and note that there is no malware. At first time, Twitter can be no opened normally. Now, the victim clicks a link in the Chrome, and the Chrome will load a new page. Actually, Twitter has been attacked. Now, if the user opens Twitter, it, it will be a phishing UI. Click the back button, it's still the phishing UI. Even if she opens from recent apps, she will say that it's Twitter asking for login. After she inputs the login credentials, the Twitter can be used just like a normal login process. But the password is sent to the remote adversary. So what happened in this attack? The user is just visiting a website in Chrome. When she opens Twitter, Twitter asks for login. Yeah, she is using Twitter, not another app. And there is no malware installed. It's just like a real login process. But after input the password, the password is sent to the remote adversary. Why? Why this happened? So, actually, in the attack, the malicious web content has spread from Chrome to Twitter's web view, and the Twitter's web view is used to impersonate its own login UI. Since the URL scheme can be used to invoke another web view, so we found this channel can cause a new threat called cross-app web view infection, or Zavi. In a Zavi attack, the remote adversary can spread the malicious content by redirecting other apps' web views to the attack website. Thus, the adversary can gain partial control on multiple apps through their web views and use these web views to launch powerful clothing attacks. Note that the attack doesn't need a malware. Now let me introduce some background information. To invoke an activity from the web content, the web view asks its hosting app to construct an intent and send it to the OS. The intent can contain the package name and the activity name, so the OS can directly locate the target activity. Otherwise, the intent can contain the action, category, and data UI to match the intent filter so the OS can find the activity. Once a link is clicked, the Android OS can convert the URL to an intent and find the target. There are two types of schemes supported by Android, implicit scheme and the explicit scheme. An implicit scheme does not name a specific app, but provides a data UI for locating the target. While an explicit scheme or intent scheme includes not only the data UI, but also the target's package name. And some developers may implement 
their customized program logics to convert the web data to an intent. We consider any customized scheme or web content providing both package name and activity name to be a deep linking approach. Now, let me introduce some basic techniques of Zavi attack. In a Zavi attack, the malicious content in one web view sends a navigation request to another web view. The latter web view will be redirected to the attack website. In this way, the malicious web content can spread across multiple web views like an infectious disease. Thus, the remote adversary can utilize these infected web views to launch powerful clothing attacks. Unlike most prior studies, the threat model is a remote adversary without a malicious app installed. A Zavi attack starts from an entry point app whose web view loads the attack web content. Such entry points can be the malicious web page in browsers or social networks, and also the malicious ad. Then, to infect other apps' web views, the malicious web content can utilize the cross-app channels, including implicit scheme, intent scheme, and the deep links as we introduced in the background information. What's more, we found that the remote adversary can gain persistent control of the victim device. In our research, we found that by default, a web view can operate in the background, continuously receiving and executing commands from the remote adversary. And even if some infected web views are closed, they can be easily reinfected by a web view running in the background. Also, to spread the malicious content, the adversary needs to check whether other vulnerable apps are installed. One way is to leverage the infected web use capabilities, like the JS interface in the AdMob and the Baidu Mobile Assistant. Another way is to simply send navigation requests to the popular apps likely already installed. If the recipient is indeed there, the web content loaded into its web view can notify the remote adversary. Note that with the adversary's persistent control, this can be done over a long period of time. With these supporting techniques, we conducted two new attacks, the remote deep phishing attack and the remote privilege escalation attack. We built the phishing attacks for Twitter and Facebook, and we also exploit Amazon apps, Facebook, and Baidu mobile assistant remotely to install malwares and send stealthy messages. Now, I will show you some attack cases for the remote deep phishing attack. We have showed the phishing attack for Twitter, but unlike Twitter, Facebook has a URL bar on its activity, which discloses the source of the web content in its web view, and therefore, it can't be used to display a phishing page. But in our research, we designed two approaches to attack Facebook. Facebook has already awarded us for our findings. The first approach is to leverage Twitter. Twitter's web view can show a web page in full screen. So the remote adversary can use Twitter to display a phishing web for Facebook. In the attack, the malicious content in Facebook's web view triggers Twitter to display a fake login UI whenever Facebook is launched. Here is a demo. In this attack, the remote adversary used Twitter to attack Facebook, and there is no malware installed. Now, at this time, Facebook can be opened normally. And if the user clicks a link in Chrome, a new page will be loaded. Actually, Facebook has been attacked. Open Facebook, a phishing UI will be showed from the Twitter. And even if the user opens Facebook from the recent app windows, it's still the same, it's still the phishing UI. 
and click the back button, the fishing UI is displayed again. So, if the user inputs her login credentials, Facebook's main activity will be displayed. So, the tag is just like a real login process, but the remote adversary can get the password. In this attack, the attack has two steps, the state change and the fishing. When the user clicks a link in Chrome, a navigation request is sent to infect Facebook's web view. Once infected, Facebook sends another URL scheme to switch back to Chrome, and Chrome will load a new page. And now, the script in Facebook's web view runs a loop and tries to trigger the Twitter. But Facebook's web view is suspended in the background. Later, when the user opens Facebook, Facebook's web view is resumed and sends a navigation request to Twitter immediately. So Facebook is not displayed, but Twitter will display a phishing page. Then, if the user clicks the back button, Facebook will be resumed and invoke Twitter again. So the phishing page is displayed again. Once the victim inputs her password, the infected Twitter's web view will launch Facebook's main activity. So the whole process is just like a real login. Another approach is to leverage PixArt. We found that PixArt's web view can show a web page without a URL address in standard mode. So the remote adversary can let Facebook invoke PixArt's web view and add PixArt to its task. Then, Whenever Facebook is open, PixArt's web view with phishing page always show on the top. In this attack, when the user clicks link in Chrome, Facebook's web view is infected and launched for a very short time. Then, the malicious content in Facebook's web view issues a URL scheme to infect PixArt's web view and added it to the Facebook's task. Once PixArt's web view is launched, it invokes Chrome to load a new page and head PixArt to the background. Now, PixArt's web view is in the Facebook's task. When the user opens Facebook, the fishing page in PixArt is displayed. And when the user clicks the back button, PixArt's web view will not be closed and the fishing page is still on the top. If the user opens the recent app window, she will see that she is using Facebook and Facebook is asking for login. After the user inputs her login credentials, Facebook's main activity will be launched by PixArt, just like a real login. Later, I will show you some cases for the remote privilege escalation attack. We found that by, we found that the Amazon App Store app can be exploited remotely to silently install any third-party app on a mobile device. The attack leverages the Amazon App Store's powerful web view, whose JS interface can install apps. But the web view has not registered any intent filter for a scheme, and thus it can't be triggered by the Chrome. In our, in our research, we found that Amazon Shopping's web view can issue deep links, so it can be used as a stepping stone. Another challenge is the domain control applied by Amazon App Store and Amazon Shopping, but we have found some ways to bypass them. Here is the attack demo. At this time, no, name, uh, no app named Malware is installed. The victim visits a malicious website in Chrome, and the Amazon apps will be launched for a very short time. Now, the malware is silently, in, silently installed in the background.
As we can see, the Mavair app is already installed and it can be opened. The attack process is summarized as this figure. First, the user visits a malicious website in Chrome. Then, the malicious content in Chrome issues a scheme to infect the Amazon Shopping's web view. After that, the malicious content in Amazon Shopping immediately issues a deep link to infect the Amazon App Store's web view. Once loaded, the malicious content in Amazon App Store opens another app to hide the Amazon apps. Now, the malicious content in Amazon App Store can silently install a malware in the background. Other cases can be found in our paper and website. Here, I will show another demo. This attack is a clothing attack. Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, and Chrome are involved. The last message in Messenger is high, and the victim clicks link in Chrome. Facebook's Messenger will send a message to the victim's friend. Now, a message, new message is sent from the Facebook Messenger automatically. Later, Later, I will show you our automatic Zavi analysis to measure whether the adversary can easily find such attack building blocks. We design an automatic analysis tool, Viewfinder. The key idea of the Viewfinder is to check whether an app exposes its web view instances to the public. We had the observation that most clues for constructing the URL that can bypass the app's check are out there in its code and manifest file. So we designed a simple fuzzing system to find the exposed web views. The fuzzing system has three parts. The first part is a simple app analyzer, which is used to find clues. It will analyze the manifest file to identify public activities and intent filters, and analyze code to collect partial URLs and strings similar to the URL components. The second part is the ADB-based father, which receives the clues and generates test cases. The third part is the runtime monitor, which is used to instrument the Android APIs and check whether an input successfully navigates a web view. The most important part is to generate test cases from the clues and we designed many strategies. For example, if there is a custom scheme in the intent filter, the father may utilize the string collected from code, and particularly the strings containing the, containing the navigation parameters, and use them to generate test cases. Our approach also utilizes no vulnerabilities to generate test cases. If the monitor observes the test URL are loaded, but not the target URL, the viewfinder will generate another case with the URI get host vulnerability we found in the Android framework. In our implementation, we use the expose hook to hook system APIs. The monitor hooks APIs to return the target URL when the app reads actuals from intent, and the monitor also hooks APIs to inspect the URL loading to know whether the test case works. We collected 5,000 apps receiving URL schemes or intents from other apps. The apps were from the Google Play top-ranked apps in last October, and the running viewfinder to analyze all these apps took seven days on three Nuxus files. We manually checked the results, and there is no false positives. The result is just a lower limit of the impact of the survey threat. Among the 5,000 apps, there are 372 of them were found to contain the web use exposed to the public. We manually checked the results. And among the apps we detected, 81% uh, apps can run in the background, and about 38% apps have JavaScript interfaces. 
Also, there are many apps provide good materials for remote deep phishing attack. For example, AT apps can show a web page in full screen. Later, I will demonstrate our mitigation. To mitigate the Zawi threat, the developer can keep his app's web view pri private, enforce proper domain control, and notify users when suspicious cross-app navigation happens. In our research, we also developed a system-level solution called NaviGuard to mitigate the threat. The idea of NaviGuard is to identify and control anomalous cross-web view navigation requests and notify the user. The NaviGuard will monitor the start activity operation. First, NaviGuard will check whether the operation comes from the web view. If the operation is not from the web view, it will be allowed. And then, NaviGuard will check whether the operation comes from a foreground activity. The launch request from the background activity will be blocked. Finally, NaviGuard will check whether the operation is caused by a touch event. Otherwise, the user will be notified. Besides, the NaviGuard allows the developer to add the whitelist domains, so some requests are allowed without asking the user. We evaluated NaviGuard, and the results show that NaviGuard is effective and with no overhead. The NaviGuard can, the NaviGuard can block the intents or cause, uh, cause an alert to the user when suspicious requests are launched. So this indicates that no longer can such attacks go unnoticed to the user. Finally, it's a conclusion. In our research, we presented the new Zawi techniques that a remote adversary can acquire persistent DLC control on multiple apps web use. And then, we demonstrate a series of multiple app cluding attacks to perform realistic remote phishing attacks and escalate the remote adversary's privileges. We also developed a fuzzing tool for identifying exposed web view. The results show that 7.4% of 5,000 apps exposed web view instances. Besides, we implemented an OS level solution to mitigate the threat. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Billy from Android Security. Uh, good talk, good finding. Um, I'm curious to the problem that you uh, addressed um, on WebView. Um, I'm trying to understand, is, is this a bug in web, WebView or is this essentially um, a design issue that has been abused because uh, developers has used WebView wrongly? Oh, I, I think that this bug is not known before and uh, some developers may expose their web views for legitimate the uh, use. For example, they want to um, redirect the user from the browser to, to his app. But, but we found that if this channel is open, the, um, the, the remote adversary can leverage multiple app, apps web use to do the uh, cloning attacks. So I, I think this is a fundamental design in the Android framework. And uh, actually, I, I found that in the Android 8, Android 8, the Chrome and the WebView will not allow the uh, launch request sent without the, the user touch event. But, but, um, but many apps may re, uh, implement their own uh, logics, so, so the channel is still, uh, is, is still there, and there is still the chance for the attacker. I see. So follow-up questions. Have you reported this to Google? Uh, we have reported uh, some confirmed vulnerability to the vendor, and, uh, and we also reported, the, for example, the uh, uh, vulnerability in Android framework to Google, okay. and also showed the case. All right. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm from Stony Brook University. I have two questions. Uh, one is, um, if there are multiple uh, WebView instances in the, uh, in the uh, activity, so how could the URL scheme uh, locate the WebView that you want to attack? And the second question is, uh, let's assume that all the applications installed in the device 
are um, like maybe they could use the should override URL uh, to uh, whitelist the, the URL that could be invoked inside the web view. So if in that case, it's still possible to launch similar attack in the case. Oh, okay, thank you. So first I will show you a slide. Um, Okay. Uh, in this slides, uh, I I I showed the how the adversary can find the uh, vulnerable apps they want. The first the first approach is to liberate the uh, liberate the infected web use uh, capabilities. For example, we find that the malicious content in AdMob or Baidu mobile assistant web view can can use the Java script interface to check whether an app is installed in the in the phone. So you can use this way to, to find the, the potential target apps. And, and another way is just to guess and try. So the adversary can simply send a navigation request to the apps likely installed. For example, um, the adversary can send a request to the Facebook. And uh, if the Facebook is installed there, the malicious web content will be loaded in the Facebook. And the remote adversary will, will know that the, the uh, the Facebook has visited our website, so then, 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 then he will know that yes, Facebook is installed. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, what's another question? Uh, so the second question is, uh, if all the applications that install in the device are using the maybe the should override URL, uh, should override URL API to define. Uh, the uh, the uh, to whitelist the URL that could be uh, could be loaded through the web view, then it could prevent the attack you just mentioned because uh, that means like for example Facebook uh, they can always uh, no matter which URL that you specify they could always force the app to load the URL that they whitelist for example always to the Facebook uh, the home page of the Facebook. Okay, exactly. thank you. Yeah. Um, Actually, uh, in our research, we have found some ways to bypass the domain control. So, uh, here is some examples. For, for example, the, uh, the, there, there are domain control in Amazon Apps. In Amazon App Store, uh, it will forcefully affix the domain ssr.amazon.com to any URL the web view is asked to visit. It. But the adversary can create a subdomain like the ssr.amazon.com.attack.com and send a navigation request .attack.com to bypass the domain control. Uh, an, another way to bypass the domain control is that we found that there is a vulnerability in Android framework. So given a malformed uh, URL, the app code may think the domain is amazon.com, but the web view will think the, the, the domain is attacker.com. So we find this way to bypass the domain control. And uh, also there are other, um, other, case, other bypass ways. For example, in our paper, uh, we, re re we demonstrated that um, the Baidu mobile assistant has a domain control, and it only allowed, uh, it will check whether the domain is from Baidu. And uh, if the domain is from Baidu, then some JavaScript interfaces will be, um, will be approved. But we found that we can use a, a risk condition attack a vulnerability to uh, inject some malicious code into the Baidu's domain. So it's just, just like a local XSS, XSS attack. So then we found another way to bypass the domain control. So I, I think there are uh, some de developers may uh, the write the logic to check the domain in a wrong way. So the adversary can leverage these vulnerabilities. Thank you. Uh, hi, very nice talk. And uh, one question I have is like, I have some experience with the uh, Amazon App Store as well. So one question here is like, in your demo, you showed the app was the malicious app was installed silently without any notification or user interaction. But as far as I know, if I remember correctly, the installation and uh, there's like uh, an ask for permission and the user agreement, that step is handled by system, yeah. by Android system, not by the Amazon app. Yeah. So I'm wondering how you 
not suppressed, showing that uh, uh, that uh, screen and uh, bypassed uh, that check, the menu no, agreement no. check. Okay. Uh, actually, we uh, we don't bypass the check uh, because Android app stores are are pre-installed in some phones. Oh. Yeah. So so the, if the Android app store is pre-installed in your phone, <laughs> it will be guaranteed oh. with that permission. Okay. 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 I see. That's the reason. Okay. Because uh, okay. Uh, another question is like in your collusion attack, that's um, f jump from Facebook to Twitter, right? Yeah. One question is like if the Twitter is not actually installed, so what will happen? Um, actually, if Twitter is not installed, the Facebook's web view will not be switched to the background. Mm -hmm. Then Facebook's web view will not be review, uh, will will not be suspended. So uh, the adversary will will get the notification mm -hmm. from the Facebook. She will know that uh, she, uh, Twitter uh, is still Facebook running in the in the front, yeah, and there is no Facebook, okay. and there is no Twitter. Uh, in in the Twitter, can you jump back to Facebook? Uh, Twitter will not jump back to uh, yeah Twitter. If the user inputs a, inputs her password, then Twitter's uh, web view will send a navigation request and launch the Facebook's main activity. So we made this way made, made this trick to. Uh, yeah. Making it just like a real login. Yes. Uh, what I suggesting? Uh, what I'm interested in is like uh, for your jump, like jump from the Facebook to Twitter. Is it limited by just a one jump, or it can continue to another another app? Um, you know, ask it, like you open that Facebook with a URL, then jump to Twitter, then Twitter to another app, then another app, then back to Facebook, then Facebook open Twitter again. Yeah. So. Uh, so it becomes a loop. Uh, actually, the, the uh, Facebook can only send one uh, URL request because uh, once the oh, once the nice. Facebook is send the request, the Facebook will be in the background and uh, be suspended. But uh, but actually, Twitter's web view can run in the background, so oh. Twitter can send multiple uh, uh, navigation requests. Actually, in, in the attack, you, if you see the demo, when the user click the back button. It's still the phishing, right? That's because the Twitter's web view will send another request and launch multiple Twitter web view instances. So once one web view instance is closed, another uh, web view instance will be displayed. But if you, okay, just another kind of is like if you just close that app and reopen it from the menu, then it will clean the state and it goes to the right UI, right? Uh, that, that depends, uh, for example, um, uh, for example, the if the user opens Facebook and uh, Facebook in most Twitter, and uh, and if the user opens Facebook again, it still will send the request. So that depends yeah. uh, depends whether the web view is closed okay. in the background. Okay. Okay. Thank you.